Hello and welcome to Indianomics. I'm Lata Venkatesh. Aside from the US Fed, the big worry for the Reserve Bank and the Monetary Policy Committee in the upcoming policy may be food prices. Look at the April to August reading of cereals prices. This is worrying because for the past four years, cereals have not been a worry at all. Look at the chart showing cereals inflation from 2020 onwards. It has spiked only this year, April to August. And this spike in cereals has led to an overall spike in food CPI this year. Look at the graph. It's much higher in the month of uh, August than it, uh, uh, in the current year than it was a year ago. What's worse is global food prices have been rising sharply in the last two years. Look at the index put out by the F United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization or FAO. But unfor uh, or rather fortunately, the FAO index has been declining in the last three months. That is from June onwards, it looks like the worst is over looking at the global index. But uh, will this is the worst over or will Indian cereal prices remain elevated? Should we worry about food CPI? Let us ask two experts, Dr. Ashok Gulati, Infosys Chair Professor at the Indian Council for Research on International Economic Relations, ICRIER, and Dr. Ramesh Chad, member of the Niti Aayog, both uh, among the best agriculture economists in the country or maybe even in the world. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Dr. Chan, let me start with you. This August spike in both cereals and food inflation was a bit worrisome. Uh, is it over, the hump over? How do the prospects look for September and beyond? You see, there is a <clears throat> shortfall of 4% uh, in area under rice compared to what was the area sown under rice uh, last year. But rice is one crop where we have highest surplus. Our production last year was 130 million ton and we require around 108, 110 million ton for production. So uh, because of the shortfall in area and also because of delayed sowing, if there is some shortfall in yield, the maximum range of uh, uh, production loss will be somewhere between six to 10 million tons. So even if we factor in that, India will have more than 10 million ton rice surplus from the current year's production. So I feel that uh, there is uh, no worry as far as uh, food uh, requirement uh, uh, in the country is concerned, but inflation can happen despite normal production, even despite above normal production because of several reasons. As you know that we are a large uh, surplus, that is one reason uh, that uh, our prices are integrated with international prices. Mm. They some influence of international prices has to be there on the domestic prices. But one big factor which is affecting food inflation across the world in India and elsewhere is the prices of agrochemical, prices of fertilizer, prices of insecticide, prices of uh, pesticides, which are related to energy uh, prices also to some extent. If you look at prices of P, prices of K, phosphatic and potassium fertilizers, they have skyrocketed. Government of India has absorbed the increase in prices of urea. But as far as increase in potassium and phosphatic fertilizer and other agrochemical are concerned, so you will just find that that will get uh, transmitted into the cost of production and therefore on a supply side. So this is something which is adding to the normal rate of increase in prices. And you know that MSP of most of the crops, government announced four to 6% uh, increase. Then this extra increase in cost of production, uh, which is uh, unexpected, that is also uh, contributing. Plus this third factor that, that our domestic market is not uh, insulated, even though we declared the ban on broken rice, uh, uh, regulating export through uh, export uh, duty. But still, you know that uh, export will happen. Already, uh, I think uh, uh, more than 7 million tons of rice has been exported out of country. So these are the factors which are contributing to food inflation. But I feel that we should 
to look at our track record on food inflation after looking at what is happening to global food prices, what is happening to prices in other countries. You have shown the, the, the FAO price index that how that uh, index is there, how those prices are uh, increasing. Okay. In fact, uh, uh, Lataji, we were expecting price inflation to cool down in the month of September. Mm. On 10th September, suddenly, when news of poor harvest of corn, poor harvest of soybean, harvest of uh, so many grains came from USA, prices in international market, if you look at data on 9th, 10th, 11th September, it just shot up by, by uh, 5 to 8%. And that is what got transmitted to uh, our domestic prices also. And that is the reason that uh, uh, that uh, this uh, inflation uh, is uh, becoming uh, a, a cause of uh, worry. But whatever measure need to be taken, as you are seeing, that uh, government is not uh, leaving any stone unturned to, to see to it that, uh, that we need to uh, uh, ensure that uh, food prices uh, remain uh, affordable for consumers. I, I take your point. That's what Dr. Gulati started with, that, uh, you know, the government has been able to provide a kind of a net, at least for uh, the, the the lowest uh, classes. Uh, but Dr. Gulati, I, I hope you could hear uh, Dr. Chand. We had a slight problem with your line. Uh, you know, the factors that Dr. Chand mentioned, fertilizer prices being, you know, skyrocketing, uh, these, are they already in the price or can they continue to keep... Uh, food inflation high in the country, cereals inflation high? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, the issue of fertilizer pricing, especially urea, urea price has not been increased for the farmers. It has been absorbed uh, in the subsidy uh, by the government. Uh, some others have increased a little bit. Uh, so I don't think it's a major uh, factor behind Indian seed the cereal prices going up. Yes, expectations play a very important role. And that's where the uh, situation is that in case of wheat, our stocks had been uh, depleting uh, very fast. And uh, in case of rice, if we continue with uh, uh, you know free food, uh, 10 kilograms per person, then uh, even the existing uh, stocks will deplete. And that plays uh, a bit of role in this. And the monsoon being somewhat uh, not very even, uh, that has created uh, a situation where the expectations that the coming crop may not be very good. Okay. Oh. And therefore, uh, uh, there is a price pressure. So all these factors combined, mm. uh, you know, you are worried about cereal prices. But if you look at the contribution to CPI inflation in August, mm. the, the highest contribution is coming from kerosene. Uh, at the PDS kerosene, 87% increase and given the weight of it and all that, mm. uh, followed by milk. And then you have uh, uh, vegetables. Mm. Vegetables is a worry on which you don't have much of control. Yes. They are very volatile. So uh, you have to go beyond cereals to understand the structure of CPI inflation and what you can do and what you can't really do. No, I, I was so, coming to the other questions, sir. I was coming to vegetables in just a minute. But before that, uh, uh, do you think that uh, the high cereal inflation and, as you say, uh, inflation expectation because of the news from abroad uh, or because of what Dr. Chan said, you know, expectations that uh, subpar monsoon in some regions can impact the rabi crop. Uh, because of that, do you think there can be second round inflation on animal feed and because of animal feed on milk? And because of milk uh, and maybe atta and maida, uh, can it also impact packaged food? So do you expect second round inflation? Yes, sure, of course. But uh, you said uh, rabi uh, inflation or rabi crop may be adversely impacted. In fact, you have all the reservoirs uh, at a pretty good, comfortable uh, storage capacity of water. So, Ravi, we will be expecting a better crop despite a somewhat uh, lower crop uh, in Kharif. So, on the whole, it will even out uh, on that front. But yes, uh, cereal prices and especially soya bean side, if uh, we include the part of the oil meal, because that impacts your livestock uh, feed prices, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, it's corn and soya uh, basically that go in a much bigger way towards the livestock sector. And if they are under pressure, uh, then of course uh, you will have uh, uh, higher uh, livestock uh, products inflation and uh, prepared meals inflation. So that will uh, be under pressure. Okay. Uh, well, Dr. John, similar question to you. Uh, you think there is still some more second round to come? Uh, and you also alluded to fertilizer. Is it absorbed, uh, you know, the non-urea fertilizers, or can there be further increases? No, non-urea, only DAP to some extent is absorbed. Uh, other kind of uh, potassium and uh, phosphatic uh, uh, fertilizer, they are part of uh, nutrient-based uh, subsidies, so not uh, uh, fully uh, absorbed. And uh, their prices have really gone uh, very, very high. But your question relating to second uh, uh, round of uh, inflation, uh, I think uh, you also mentioned about uh, feed, but I would say that uh, we have some good news uh, on uh, front of uh, uh, crops, uh, which uh, are uh, uh, main uh, source of uh, livestock feed. Both uh, soybean as well as uh, maize, you just find that maize area, core cereal, uh, cereal area is much higher than what it was uh, last year. So I, 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 I feel that uh, as far as uh, feed is uh, uh, concerned, uh, the prices may not uh, go very high. Also, uh, internationally also, you just find that uh, prices of oil meals uh, are uh, softening. They are not. Uh, uh, they are not uh, behaving like uh, cereals. But uh, uh, coming to the second round, mean after grief, when it comes to Ravi, several factors are important. But the point which uh, Professor Gulati mentioned that the level of reservoir is 18 percent higher than what is the average of last 10 years, and also. According to some meteorologists, some Larina phenomena, so uh, we can expect uh, good rainfall in the month of October and November, which occurs very well for, for uh, Ravi soil. So I do not see this uh, second round of uh, inflation uh, making inflation more severe <laughs> or putting us into a inflation or high inflation as a peril. I do not see that kind of situation arising in case of India. Okay, on that cautiously optimistic note, I'm going into a break, coming back in a minute for more on what the global trends are and how things can shape up on the whole uh, in the headline inflation front. Back in a minute.